Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, July 16th, 2020. This is the week in charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I'm humbled by your presence. So what are we talking about? Well, current market conditions, obviously. I don't have a lot to say about that when we get to the live charts. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, just keep them to what's on the slide, and that's just so my ADD doesn't kick in, and the slides. And when we get to the live charts, feel free to ask about anything you want. We can always come back to the slides, too, then, if you like. Your favorite stock picks, if you don't mind, ask about one stock at a time and do wait until we get the live charts just so your question doesn't get buried or deleted in the meantime. And ask about one ticket at a time, and that's for your benefit and hit return. So I'll make sure I see them all. So this morning I woke up thinking I want to talk about the Darvis book, how I made $2 million in the stock market. And I'll explain where that line of thinking came along. I'm actually working on a piece for the website and I've been working on it for a few days and it's taken a lot longer than I thought it would because there's a lot to discuss. And I figured this morning it'd probably be a good idea to kind of hold off on all that discussion and maybe get into a little bit more of the weeds and the details and things about Darvis himself and a lot more thoughts when we cover this, maybe in part two. But I think the most important takeaway from Darvis is his accidentally discovering technical analysis and his box theory. So we're going to get into that. And the other thing I was thinking about this morning is, should you join the church of what's happening now? And there's a lot of crazy things that are happening in the market. And I've been kind of sucked in a little bit to this stuff. And I'll flesh that out when we get to it. And I do have some new research which I think is showing some promise. Now, one thing that concerns me a little bit or a lot of it is what Linda Rasky once said in her book, Trading Sardines. She said, right when you figure out the key to the market, they change the locks. And recently I've done some little intraday research and played around a lot with the ACP platform over at Stock Charts. And I noticed some pretty incredible things with the S&P 500 and some of these ETFs and everything. But the reason these things were so incredible was the volatility was off the hook. And we had this big bear down move and a big bull up move. And for a second there, it sure looked like I found a key to the market. But like Linda Rasky says, right when you think you find the key to the market, they change. The lock and I'm going to flesh that out when we get to that in a lot more detail. There's a disclaimer screen as you know you can lose money trading or as I often say borrowing a line from my buddy Greg Morris all predictions about the future and a lot of stuff could happen between now and then. Now I do get letters obviously and we got a couple of write-ins this week but there's one in particular that I wanted to cover before we get to the live charts. Dave, I don't think I'll make the Thursday show, but maybe the next one. Well, let's hope. Here are my picks. Maybe you can look at them to see if they make the list. XXX, gold. It's trending above overhead. I've been watching for weeks, and it finally pulled back. Well, the reason I put XXX there is because that is one of my stock picks for today and the trading service. ASA, another gold, not as nice. PRTS, saw it in your show a while back. It's trend to refuse to pull back. Went in a sideways flag, broke out, and maybe finally pulled back. We'll take a look at that in the live charts. I've been more active in trading, starting to do well, starting to watch your shows. Notice more tech, like the Landry Light and other things. Interesting. I just look for traditional patterns. Keep. Well, I still look for the traditional patterns. I still look for the same exact thing that I've always done. These new little gee whiz indicators aren't really indicators, as I explained quite a bit. They're more of illustrators to show you what's already in the chart, but they can be quite useful at times to kind of see what's happening in the charts. But keep in mind that I always start with a blank chart. When I look at a couple of thousand stocks every night, I'm looking at a completely blank chart. And then as I'm whittling down my stocks and do a little analysis, I might pop in the bow tie moving averages, 
or pay attention to what a Landry light is and things like that. So it's not like I've become more technical. I'm just using a few of these things to help teach others what I'm doing and to help illustrate what's already in the chart. And they could also be useful for setup development and system development, which I'll show you here in a few minutes. And if we have time, maybe I'll show you something like Landry light pullbacks which I initially use a 20 EMA, but 30 EMA might even be better for that. We'll take a look at that in the live charts. All right, here's his stock, and I do like it. And notice it broke out of a nice base. It's trended very, very, very nicely. A little bit of an acceleration in that trend. The other thing is it's been a really persistent trend. Now, my line's a little bit off, but I think if I tried really hard, I could probably intersect nearly every single line. Of, of the bar chart, okay? So in other words, mathematically, the mathematical equivalent of that would be linear regression where you punch in all the data points and then it finds the curve. And the curve in this case would be a nice uptrend, but I just like to draw lines on the chart. So we did have a TKO in this particular stock and it's pulled back a little bit. And I do have orders working. I hope I have orders working. I think at, at the least, let me check. I think I have, no, I don't have an order. So I should have an order in that. So shame on me. So anybody here in the service, if this one triggers, you better let me know. <laughs> so a few days ago, I was talking with somebody, one of you guys actually, and you mentioned Docu, a stock that had been in a really, really nice trend, still is. And I explained to him, I said, well, it doesn't always fit my methodology, stocks that are trending that is sometimes you just get box stocks although docu thank goodness did set up as a tko and i did have it listed in my landry list on the day that it did i just had other stocks that i like better such as ocft which we'll talk about in a little while and a couple of other ones and in next week's presentation i'll show you that list from that day if you if you can't wait you can go to davelander.com archives and go to, I forget the exact date, but you can go back a couple of months. It should be glaring on the chart and you could see what I said about those stocks on those days. By the way, if you get really bored or can't sleep at night, I think it's a wonderful exercise and it's completely free. Start looking at those archives, especially for 2020, where you could see, hey, he's long this, long that, long this, long this. He's got a couple of shorts on, even though the market's going up. Oh, he's getting knocked out of his longs, but he's putting on more and more shorts. And then at some point, the market's rallying back up, but he's getting knocked out of his shorts. And then now he doesn't have anything on, and now he's putting some longs on. And it's a really good exercise in the ebb and flow of the portfolio. And I was super bearish for quite a while, maybe a little too long. But then we started getting long side setups and no short side setups. And I started putting on those longs. And then somebody's like, Dave, when did you become so bullish? It's like, well, I didn't really flip a switch or anything. I was just kind of following along with the database. But anyway, I digress. The point I'm making is, or trying to make, is that if you go in and look at some of these stocks, getting back to the, the Darvis thing or the docu, is that my methodology is not the be-all, end-all, but sometimes you'll get these really nice, what I call box stocks, where the stock makes a little consolidation on top of a consolidation on top of a consolidation, a little base breakout, rinse and repeat. In other words, what Darvis called boxes. Now, just a little quick thumbnail on Darvis, and I'll flesh this out in a little more detail next week. A little spoiler alert if you haven't read the book. And by the way, if you have not read the book, if you go to my website, davelandry.com slash books to read, okay, davelandry.com slash books to read, it should be on this page towards the bottom under technical analysis. And I'd recommend you read that and all the other books that I have listed here. And if you, if you do click on those links, I'll get a, a very small little few crumbs from Amazon, which is better than Pocono. I know help to pay for the website and other things, things of that nature. So getting back to, to Darvis, the point I was making with the gentleman is that my methodology is not to be all end all, but in this case, we did have a TKO, which is a good thing and kind of cool. And sometimes you just get stocks that trend and trend and trend. So here's the docu 
and here's the little Darvis boxes that I drew in there. And you can see that it made, for the most part, boxes that sort of stacked upon top of boxes, but there was some overlap. Darvis called that pyramiding, where the box would sit on top of the next box. And the way Darvis discovered this was he was a dancer and he was traveling the world and he was offered some stock in lieu of payment for a gig and he later wasn't able to make the gig but being a forthright gentleman he decided that he would buy the stock anyway and he asked the people who would give him the stock he said look I'm going to give you a check for the stock even though I'm not going to dance just to show good faith but I need you to guarantee that you'll make up any losses. And the stock was 50 cents at the time, it was 3,000 shares. And they agreed with one caveat that said, we're only, we'll cover your losses for up to six months, which sounds like a pretty good deal. I would buy any stock from anyone if they covered my losses for six months. He had completely forgotten about the stock and a couple of months later he checked it and he was up $8,000 and he immediately cashed out. And he started trying to trade, long story endless, and he failed miserably until he happened to notice that stocks would tend to consolidate and then break out and then consolidate and break out, rinse and repeat. And that's how he came up with his box theory. Now, when we get into the details of it over the next week or so, or when I get the piece published, there's a lot of things that I kind of pick apart in this and to a point to maybe a fault. The bottom line is there's a lot of good stuff here, especially for someone, the two people, especially for someone who is new to technical analysis. Like I've got one person that just came in and he's like a sponge. He's reading everything in the world. He's trying to learn everything in the world about technical analysis. And he's wondering if he should be looking at fundamentals and all this other stuff. And if you just kind of focus on what Darvis did in the boxes, not that you want to trade that directly, because I will pick it apart a little bit, but it kind of helps to wrap your head around the fact that all you have to do, I know easier said than done, but all you have to do is capture a price move and it doesn't really matter about the fundamentals of the stock. And it's kind of interesting that Darvis came to this epiphany but then later on, he added back in fundamentals to his analysis, which I think was a mistake. And that's something that we'll get into in upcoming weeks in the piece when I do it. But anyway, this is what the boxes look like. And I'll show you how to draw them in just one second. And then on this particular day right here, this was the TKO I was talking about earlier. Now, Darvis would only buy at all time highs. And there's nothing wrong with that. But one of my criticisms of that would be you have some really great stocks sometimes at low, low levels, especially like after a bear market slide like we just had, that began to rise from the ashes. And sometimes, let's say you have an energy stock, it'll go down and bottom for six or eight months and then quadruple from those levels. So nothing wrong with all time highs because you definitely have the momentum in your favor and everybody who's ever bought the stock is happy. But I think there are ways to get in earlier, bow ties, first thrusts, and things like that. One thing's of that nature. That's old classic Dave Leonard, the old Arnold Schwarzenegger imitations. Darryl, I used to do Daryl Hammond doing Arnold Schwarzenegger. One of the critics that I saw with Darvis that I fully agree is that he was in the right place at the right time. And I'll have a lot more to say about that. And the bottom line there is you're in the right place, right time. Well, you better recognize that you're in the right place at the right time. And that's why I'm doing a lot of research into all these wild and crazy stocks that are going up a thousand percent over a couple of days, because I want to make sure I'm not missing this golden opportunity that might be in front of me. And we'll get to that towards the end of the presentation. Now, if Darvis defined a box, as a high that wasn't touched for three days or a low that wasn't touched for three days, okay? So the thing is, with anything, you have to be careful that what you're seeing is not in hindsight, okay? And let me just get my pen ready here. We'll draw a few things in, and I'll, I'll give you a couple examples of that. For instance, 
recently I was doing some research and, and years ago, I saw someone do something, do the same exact thing. Years ago, I was approached by somebody and they thought they had the Holy Grail and they had some moving average patterns. And one of them was if the moving average was headed higher, you would buy, okay? That's kind of an oversimplification, but that's part of it. Well, as I start looking at the charts he was using, I'd say, okay, here's your close right here. And your moving average looks something like this. Okay, let me redo this. Here's your moving average. And here's the closing price. Ignore this for now. And he says, okay, well, if the moving average is up, then you want to buy. So he did all this testing and he showed phenomenal results. And he put me together with the hedge fund and we were going to trade his system. And I, I guess, for lack of a better term, was probably the head of research for him. And he thought he had it all figured out. But I quickly realized that the moving average had a look ahead period. And this upward turn up in the moving average was based on this closing price of the next day, which obviously you didn't have until the close of the next day. So he had a magical crystal ball that new price would be higher. So he would buy on this day here and it jump up. So the point I'm trying to get to is you don't know the top of the box, okay, until three days later because the box, the top is untouched for one day, two day, three days. So the top of the box is not known until this part point here, okay? And the bottom of the box is not known until it's not touched for three days. So we think this might be the bottom, but we don't know until way out here, okay? So just a something real quick and i've seen things happen the same gentleman who hired me on as head of research to start a hedge fund with this system of his he noticed that if you had two days where a price was the same you need to get ready for a big move well come to find out this day here was not a real day of trading it was a holiday so that's just another little problem that can happen when you're doing this kind of back testing so you need to be really careful of that and i've heard of many other things and it's as I've said in prior shows, when I was on that little volatility kick that I've been on, a lot of times you have a bottom in volatility and it's it lines perfectly with the stock bottom. But then when you look at it really closely, it might be off by a few days or even a few weeks once you look at it more closely. So this is how he defined his so-called boxes. So it was kind of cool the other day. Now, just... Let me give you a little background. I've always looked at pivot points, meaning a high surrounded by lower highs or a low surrounded by lower lows. So essentially what Darvis is doing sort of is pivot points. So one thing I pay attention to, let's say the market opens up, does this, and then starts selling off. Then obviously I look at this pivot point and it comes down here and makes a low and starts rallying up. Then I look at this pivot point as inflection points, okay? So maybe if the market, if I'm looking at an intraday trend trade, okay, maybe if the market S&P 500 stays in that opening range, maybe I don't wanna do anything, okay? Maybe I wanna try to avoid this fake out in the market or whatever other fake outs may come, the first fake out here. Yesterday, for instance, and I did get sucked in and I did lose money, but I avoided, I would have lost a lot more money had I taken the first couple of fake outs. Instead, I was paying attention to these pivot points. So just as much as Darvis's method could be used to help to get you in a trending stock or a trending market, it could also help you to stay out of a market that's chopping around. And that might be the highest and best use for it. And Darvis didn't invent pivot points and all, but it's kind of neat the way he just he defined them and he used them. And I think it's it's something that we could certainly use in our trading. Especially if we're trying to capture an intraday trend. So a couple of days ago on the 14th, the S P opened higher, a nice little gap higher. 
and then it began to sell off. Now, at this point, that's one bar that did not touch the high, okay? So we think that could be the top of the box, but we don't know. And then we had another bar here, but it didn't touch the top of the box, so that's two. And then we had another little bar that sold off a little bit, so that's bar three. So now we know that's the top of the box, okay? Now, if we're looking to find the bottom of the box, we have a low going back to, to bar one. Let's assume that we didn't have all those bars. We have a low, we have one higher low. So it could be the bottom of the box, but then we make another lower low. So maybe that could be the bottom of the box. And then we make one more lower low. And maybe that's the bottom of the box. And then we have one, two, three bars where it's untouched. So now we know the bottom of the box and the top of the box. So there's the bottom and then the top we just did. So that's confirmed. So if we draw that in, it looks like that. Now notice that when we broke out of the top of the box, and that's when Darvis would buy, when it broke out of the top of the box, okay? Now, one of the criticisms, which I'll get into in a lot more detail, we'll talk a little bit about it today, but I'll talk over the next couple, couple of weeks or so. One of the criticisms is that he would put in a stop one eighth below the breakout point. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> so if you put in a stop one eighth below the breakout point, I think more often than not, you get stopped out unless you're winning some amazing markets. And I'll touch upon that in one second too. And the other thing to think about is the whole world now has a computer sitting on the desk and I'm working with three right now, three computers, three monitors. So you would see these breakouts. Somebody's like, oh, poor Darvis, just think if he had today's technology. Well, if he had today's technology, he wouldn't be any better than anyone else because everybody has to take today's technology. So you do have to make adjustments to where you would know that you would be stopped out quite a bit. And I think that you would have to use this as a tool and not necessarily a method in and of itself. Anyway, as you can see, you got a box that was forming here and then a box that formed up here, and then that box continued for a long, long time. The market, and this is the spiders, began to break out of the top of the box, but then failed and broke out the bottom of the box, and so that would be your sell signal there. Now, if you squint your eyes, let's say we were following Darvis, see how it retraced a little bit up on the following bar? We know for a fact that you would have got stopped out on that signal right there. Remember, breakouts are very much prone to failure in this day and age, especially. And then we have a box begin to form at lower levels. And then you could see the top of the box begins to drop. Now, remember, the top of the box is not known for three bars, at least. And the box top just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping in this particular case. And there were actually no bottoms formed on, what day was that? Wednesday afternoon when this occurred. Actually, Tuesday afternoon, there were no bottoms that were formed. So the market went up the whole morning and went down the whole afternoon. It made boxes on top of boxes in, in the morning. And then in the afternoon, the boxes dropped, or at least the one box dropped, and then no other subsequent boxes were formed. So it's pretty cool, huh? Well, the thing is, the thing you have to realize is that everything works better with trend. And here's the GWIS indicator that Keith referenced. But if we put the Landry light in a 30-day EMA, now I know the 30-day EMA depends on your overnight data. And ACP does not track the overnight data, but that's okay. So you do have a true representation of price maybe after, I don't know, 10 or so bars, even though it's 30, after 30 for sure, the 30 day is a true 30 day, but 30 day EMA or any EMA for that matter catches up the price fairly quickly. 
But just using this indicator without picking it apart too much, you had upside Landry light all morning, meaning that the lows are greater than the moving average. And then you had downside Landry light all afternoon. So pick your favorite trend indicator. And I probably work hard to <laughs> tell you that my stuff isn't the best in the world. I probably should say, hey, my stuff's the best in the world. This is what you need to use. But the bottom line is everything works better with trend. So getting back to the, the DocuSign, my question is, let's say he bought here. Well, notice, if not on that bar, certainly on the next bar, the stock came right back into the box, okay? Now, where do you where do you get back in? Because you don't have a new top of the box. How many times do you go after it every time it makes a higher high? And then, let's say you did wait for the next box to form and you got in well notice the next day now we don't know where the new box is going to be at this point but notice the next day it came in fairly hard okay and then you had another breakout and one has to wonder intraday because he said as soon as it breaks the box you want to get in and as soon as you get filled you put in a stop order one eighth Stocks traded in eighths back then. I'm old enough to remember when stocks traded in eighths. And I know some of you are too, so don't laugh. <laughs> but you don't know whether he would have gotten stopped out or not unless you go back in and look at the, the intraday data on that particular day. And I don't know if I had that going back that far. So anyway, that's his box thing. And you see there's some boxes stacking up in between. Again, there's the TKO that we did have in here. On that particular day, I liked other stocks better that were more inefficient stocks that I thought had more better opportunities. But here's the deal, as I'll say in one minute, if you knew a stock would turn into a box stock like this, and by box stock, I make a little air quotes, okay? I'm not saying that you trade this Darvis stock exactly like this, but if it's a stock that, as a general statement, makes boxes on top of boxes or higher boxes or pyramid boxes, whatever you want to look at, or stair steps higher, then if you do a way to predict that ahead of time, obviously you'd own the world. And if I knew how to do it, you would never see my fat ass again, ahead of time, that is. Now, the point I'm trying to get to is that the specifics aren't as important as the concept. I don't think the exact specifics if we could figure them out there's some things i think that are left to a little bit of interpretation on how he did it and that's one of my concerns with putting this article out is somebody's gonna pick it apart and say well i'm not sure that's what he meant or whatever it's like the general concept of a trend following methodology in this particular case a box methodology a breakout box methodology or consolidation methodology that's kind of what he's doing. All trading systems can be balled into a type of methodology. So the Darvis stuff is a breakout methodology. Obviously my stuff for the most part, with the exception of IPOs, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, is a pullback methodology, okay? And obviously the third one would be reversion to the mean, where you look to buy markets because they're low or sell markets because they're high, they're high, and as I often say, that'll work until it don't. But every methodology would have its own nuances. So the question is, when you're looking at a concept, I guess the first thing you should ask yourself is, is it conceptually correct? And if it's trend following, then yeah, it's conceptually correct. But if it's trend following, what kind of trend following? This obviously is a breakout methodology. And it has all those nuances, which comes with a breakout methodology, prone to failure. And it does help, and this is something that I'll talk a lot about next week and in the article, but it does help to be in the right place at the right time. The turtles, most of them at least, a lot of them crashed at the time and couldn't trade the methodology. But the turtles did exceptionally well. And the reason they did exceptionally well is that markets broke out then and followed through each methodology would have its own nuances breakouts are prone to failure again especially in this day and age 
I would never be shodden Friday, okay? Because we all get our ass handed to us in this business quite often, okay? And that's why I, I get so angry at these so-called YouTube gurus who make it look easy and tell you how much money they make. And if I could make as much money as easy as they could make money, you'd never see my fat ass again. But every methodology, again, is going to have its own nuances. And the turtles, a lot of the turtles in subsequent years have failed. And I haven't, I don't have the time or energy to do the research. I know of one that's blown up for a fact. I know of another one that's, and I probably don't want to call anybody out by name. I don't want to get in trouble. But I did have a client once called me up, and this particular gentleman lost hundreds of thousands of dollars of his money. So I hate to say that they were a one-hit wonder, but it sure seems like everyone that I know of, either through reading about or through hearsay, hasn't done exceptionally well since. I don't think there's that many that are still successful. They were in the right place at the right time. Now, you can't take that away from them they did an incredible feat and I, I'm still amazed at what they did and how they did it. Reversion to the mean trading, as I often joke, will work until it don't. Somebody recently told me that they're going to sell put options. They're not going to trade my trend following methodology anymore. They're going to sell put options so they can sleep at night. Well, that's kind of a reversion to the mean type of thing. You're hoping that that option doesn't go into the money and i'm just not sure how you can sleep at night doing that so every methodology has its own nuances he'll he'll probably sleep he'll probably sleep 99 out of 100 days and that last day when the shtf he'll won't be able to sleep the next 99 days but i don't want to digress too far by the way i've seen reversion to the mean and things like that work for a long 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 time until eventually they don't. Usually if somebody comes to me and they're doing some reversion to mean thing or whatever and I try to sway them against it, I just say, okay, well, do that for two years and then report back to me. Let me know how you're doing. And in the 20-something years I've been doing this, not one person has emailed me back two years later. And I'd be willing to bet if they're doing great that they would be like, aha, you see, I told you so. Anyway, so far, no one has done that. Now, being a trend trader isn't the greatest thing in the world. A trend trader will spend much of his time less wealthy. I just got stopped out a few minutes ago, right before I got started, of a position. And I did make a little bit of money on the position, but I was dropping F-bombs this morning because I gave up a lot of that money. So even though I have more money than when I started the position, I gave up a lot of money this morning, okay? So most of the time, the market is gonna spend its time backing and filling, and you're always in some sort of drawdown, it seems like, as a trend trader, and then you bang out new highs, and then you go back to being a drawdown all too soon. Now again, if you knew which stocks would become box stocks, you'd own the world. What I would recommend is you trade your own methodology and hope that your stocks turn into a box stock. Now I know I use the word hope, that four letter word you should never use in this business, but if you are picking the best and leaving the rest, if you really, really like a setup and it fits all the criteria, like that aforementioned gold stock we were talking about, then maybe, just maybe, you have stacked the odds in your favor, and maybe it'll turn into a box stock down the road, just like DocU, and I'm not bragging because I didn't take the setup. I had other setups I liked better at the time, but DocU so far has been a box stock since that TKO. Now, obviously, following the Darvis theory would have got you in a little sooner, but it might have also chewed you up enough to where you would be losing money even though it's gone higher. But before I digress too far, if you could get into a box stock, not necessarily following Darvis to a T, but if you get to a stock that becomes a box stock 
and goes higher and higher and forms boxes on top of boxes, you would own the world. And every now and then we do catch one. But a lot of times you obviously don't. Now, money management, money management, money management. I keep kind of, I'm kind of a little bit of a spoiler alert. A lot of things I want to point out about Darvis was he did do some things that made a lot of sense to me, like move your stop up to the bottom of the next box after it was formed. That's sort of the same thing we're doing with the trailing stop because, and maybe we'll take a look at like Chewy here in a little while. But what happens is a lot of times the market goes up and consolidates and we trail off stop higher when price moves higher and we stop trailing off stop when price moves sideways. And if that price takes off again, our stop will be moved to the bottom of the base, which would be the same as a Darva stop. So he was right in doing that. One thing that I think he was wrong in is on one or two of his positions, if memory serves, he got out and he could have ridden him for a lot longer because he wanted to pursue something else. So that's that's open for debate, but what's not open for debate or, or what you can't argue with is he ended up having $2 million in one position. Now, we all know what can happen when a CEO decides to fondle the secretary and she's not too fond of that. What happens overnight? The stock gets torpedoed. Sometimes a CEO might fudge the books or God knows what else. Their product may harm people. A comp competition may come along. You know, there's this popular platform out there, obviously Zoom, right? ZM, stock's been on fire forever. I log in this morning to go to webinar and they're like, hey, you can have up to 20 webcams now. So instantly overnight, Go to webinar now has a feature which seems pretty similar to Zoom. Okay, so it happens, things could happen. And if you have two million, if you know, the book is how I made two million in the stock market, so I don't know how much money he had at that particular time, but he had two million in one stock, so he could have easily lost a million in that one stock. So, this is, I thought I would grab a winner out of the portfolio, OCFT, and look at a couple things with the Darvis box. This is where we entered it. This is our methodology, right, based on that spreadsheet. And by the way, I think that was the same exact day if we back this out. I think this was the same exact day. We'll check the Landry list. But I think this was the same exact day that we had that TKO. How many times have to tell you every Thursday to do a webinar? <laughs> so the entry was here, basis the spreadsheet. The stop was down here. We had a nice pullback, nice cup and handle, still a fairly new issue. Our initial profit target was here. And then we get our stop up to break even at that point, following the money management. And then we began to trail the stop higher. Now, if we were doing the Darvis thing, then the recent low, which is just below where our stop is, would be the low of the box. So my stop now would be something like a Darvis stop. And if it continues to consolidate, it doesn't touch it, then obviously it goes on to make a new box, then that would be a, a new Darvis low, if today's low, and I'll show you that in one second. I'm sorry, if you go back to the low of the 13th, I believe, or the 14th, that low could become the bottom of the box. Now, I was looking at this stock this morning. It's like, damn, Dave, you're not a big breakout player, but you do play breakouts to some extent in IPOs. I do the Landry Light breakouts on the 5 SMA, which also has to be a new closing high. I do the Buy at B, which is a closing high pattern. So I drew in Darvis's box and I was entering this stock right around the same time it broke out the box, maybe a little bit earlier when it was making that new closing high. So that would have been the Darvis entry. That's probably right around the time I got in. Now his stop would have been below, right below the box. I don't know if that would have been touched intraday, but you could see that it didn't really retrace too much and it certainly did close above the box. And then it went higher and made a box at this particular level here. 
So if you were trading on Darvis methodology, your stop would be below the box. And looking at my trades, it looks like that's about where I got stopped out. So without knowing it, I kind of trading a Darvis box type of methodology in IPOs. And by accident, I've discovered something here. Maybe you could apply, and this is spotter for research, but maybe you could apply his box theory to IPOs because IPOs do tend to have a breakout characteristic to them. And that's one thing I like about IPOs is sometimes they break out and don't look back. There's all this euphoria and they could be really, really, really awesome. And that's the closest thing to breakout how I'll trade is an IPO. And I guess it is a breakout and once you boil it all down. Now, if we were trading Darvis as opposed to my methodology, and I'm not sure how I would handle that first new high in there, what his box would look like, because you wouldn't have the box until three days later, unless you were using this top from way, way back here, okay? But either way, even if you did buy on that breakout, you would have gotten stopped out because it came right back in. So now you would have a box above the box and so far so good. And as I said a second ago, if today's, I'm sorry, if Wednesday's low holds or Tuesday's low holds, then we're gonna have another box on top of a box. And I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully we'll be in this stock for a long, long time as it continues to build boxes on top of boxes. So the Darvish breakout would have been on that day there. And then so far you can see that provided it didn't look back intraday, which I don't know, you can go back and see if I have, I should have intraday data back to the 15th. We can see if it came back in. But so far you can see it's starting to make a new box. Anyway, I'm gonna have a lot more to say about Darvis in upcoming weeks. I think the, the great thing it does is it helps, especially somebody new to trading, to wrap their head around the fact that if prices are moving higher, consolidating, moving higher, consolidating, moving higher in that stair-step fashion or pyramiding the boxes, as Darvis says, then that's a good thing. And, and you could not know what the company does and make money off the company as the price moves higher. <laughs> a couple of days ago, I triggered into the stock. I'm like, hey, I triggered the stock, Marcy, and uh, it's doing pretty good. She's like, what do they do? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> Spoken like a true technician. Now, any any thoughts or, or anything on that? I know I kind of went all over the place. I wasn't really sure exactly when, where I wanted to go with it today, other than talking about how he set up the boxes and just a little bit of background information on what he did. And by the way, as I said earlier, right place, right time. He was in a rip-roaring bull market. And I do have some charts from the 50s on the S&P 500 where the market just went straight up. So you have to be in the right place at the right time if you're going to trade a breakout methodology or pick your spots very carefully, something like IPOs. Okay, Nico says... Concerning the box setup, if you don't like breakout strategies, have you researched entering via a limit order at the bottom of the box after it was established three candles to lower low? I would say, without going any further, I would say you're buying as a market is dropping. And as a general statement, that's a bad idea. You want to trade in the direction of the trend. So you're kind of counting on that mean reversion to happen. So I would I would say that's a bad idea. And Here's the thing, if the stock does start to break out, then you would miss the trade altogether if it didn't go back down and touch the bottom of the box, okay? Was established, three candles, no lower low, would say a, a TP at the top of the box. What is a TP? That would mean you obviously that price would have to go back to the bottom again in order to have, take profits and entry, but you're pretty much risk reward ratio. Okay, so what he's saying, I think what he's saying is, I think he's saying, why not trade it as reversion to the mean, okay? So the problem with that is two things. First of all, so reversion to the mean is basically, and I don't know why it keeps doing this. You would sell here and you would buy here and you would sell here and you would buy here, okay? The problem is, 
low, this might seem low, okay, but if it's going down, it might continue to go down, okay? And if you're trying to sell here, it might continue to go up. And here's the other thing, if you're truly a reversion to the bean trader, then this is even a better bargain, a better place to sell, okay? And this is even a better place to buy. And then it could keep on keeping on. So he's saying like, why not buy with a limit order at the bottom of the box? Well, in this particular case, you don't know that's the bottom of the box until one, two, three days later. So, okay, three days later, we've got a limit order down here. Well, it never does make that bottom of the box, okay? So this stock takes off without you. So that's a downside to reversion to the mean trading. And he's saying take profit at the top of the box. Well, let's say you did get in at the low of the box somehow, and you take profits here. Well, then you miss this whole big move here. And as I often preach, outliers are key. The, a lot of times people come to me and say, hey, Dave, you suck. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, I don't I don't feel like I'm doing that bad. We're not we're not we're not setting the world on fire. Let's just take a look at what's going on. And it's like, okay, well, you took four out of five losing trades that are recommended, but that fifth trade would have paid for all of those losers and then some. So we're playing for that occasional outlier. If you're playing reversions to the mean trading, you're going to in taking profits at the top of the box you're going to limit your profits and true reversion to the mean trading doesn't use stops you have potential unlimited losses so every methodology has its own nuances and that's one of the problems okay that would mean obviously that the price would have to go to the back to the bottom of the box again or you have an entry but you'd get a pretty much pretty good risk to reward ratio so he, I think he's saying wait until the box is established, but if you did that, you would never get you would never get in because in this particular case, it took off without revisiting the bottom of the box. Because I think I said a second ago. Okay. So yeah, I can kind of pick apart every methodology. Not that mine's a be all end all, but I've known a, I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. But good good points and good questions. And and you know what? Let me hopefully I'll encourage you to to do your own research and see what works for you. But I can tell you a lot of things that don't work because I have lost a lot of money trying things that don't work. I've been involved with things that work for a long time and then blow up and learn some really valuable lessons. And it took many years for me to learn a lot of these lessons. So if you ever kind of pick up in my voice that I might have a little bit of a an ax to grind, so to speak, on some of this stuff, that's because I've had some really bad experiences. And I've also seen a lot of lives ruin, ruined with a lot of these things, such as reversions to the mean trade. And I guess I shouldn't complain too much about reversion to mean traders. As I often say, I would say that I get more re pure reversion to the mean traders, former pure reversion to the mean traders, than any other type of trader that comes to me for trend following. Okay, I was looking for a particular slide this morning and I found this slide and it said, resist the urge, let me rewind that. And it said, resist the urge to join the church of what's happening now. And you've gotta be really careful not to chase your own tail in the markets. Now I have to go back in, in and look at that presentation to see what I was talking about. But let's say like Nico's pointed out, we're in a trading range and the market is bouncing back and forth, bouncing back and forth. So you're thinking, okay, this reversion to mean trading is working really good. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Well, you don't realize that you're just looking at one small part of the market and there might be a much bigger part that's going to unfold. You might have a longer term trend unfolding and I knew a trader once that claimed that if the market was breaking out, and I knew he was he was shorting because he was kind of reversion to the mean trading, right? He's like, oh no, 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 I'm playing the breakouts now. It's like, oh, okay. It's like, damn, well, I'm stupid because I'm losing my ass. And then the market would be have a big reversal, and I'd be like, oh man, you're uh 
you know, I knew you were playing those breakouts. You're getting creamed. He's like, oh, no, 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 I'm playing reversion to the mean, you know, and the market was trending and he was a trend trader. Well, it was hard for me to see this because I was pretty new to trading. I'm like, why am I struggling so much? And this guy's just always, no matter what, on the right side of the market. Well, come to find out, I don't think he was telling the truth. Big duh now in hindsight, right? You can't be all things in all markets. And I think that's where I was kind of going with this church of what's happening now speech. But lately, because there are some amazing things that are happening in the church of what's happening now, is, is it okay to visit the church of what's happening now? One of the members of Dave Landry Trend Traders, my Facebook group, John R. And by the way, if you want to join, love to have you. You have to be a gold member, though. And that's to keep the riffraff out. I'm half kidding. <laughs> Reason I'm half kidding, and I always make the joke I'm half kidding, but in this case, I'm kind of half serious because I've been involved with groups before and they've always failed miserably and I've hated them. And it's just too hard. I just hate dealing with them. But this group has been phenomenal. And I think that's because we got everybody qualified. And the group is free, but you do have to be a gold member, which does have a nominal cost to it and hopefully it's worth everyone's while but from the stock picks that i've gotten from the group from the research that i've gotten from the group i can tell you right now it's it's really paid for itself so one of our members john r said he's noticed a pattern lately where these stocks just blast higher they come back down to earth and then they blast higher again so for lack of a better name i called them return to paradise or rtp so I started noodling around, as Keith calls it, with my newfound indicator or whatever, and it's something that I've uh, I've had Landry Light has been published in Metastock, although they might call it Dave Light or Daylight, but it's been in Metastock for for many years, and then Landry Light goes all the way back to 1995 or 1994. And I think the first article published on it was in 1996. I'm dating myself here, huh? <laughs> 1996 in Stocks and Commodities magazine. That's, without digressing too far, that kind of launched my career. The aforementioned hedge funds I talked about got in touch with me. And then somebody read the article like Landry Light and said, hey, this guy Connors is looking for somebody to do some research. Maybe you should talk to him. And, and then I met a lot of other people around that time and learned a lot and became part of trading markets. Dot com if anybody remembers that it's sad to say though the website is no longer what it was and it, it used to be uh, pretty awesome and i'm not sure why they let it go that's kind of a bummer but that's another story altogether anyway taking john r's research and running with it a little bit taking that ball and running with it i was thinking okay well what if we qualified this a little bit I hate to use the word quantify because that suggests mechanical, but I am a discretionary trader. But what if we quantified it a little bit or qualified a little bit so we could start looking for these patterns and see what happens? So taking the ball and running with it, okay, let's say the stock has to have a major rally, maybe two times or three times or more. And then the stock has to return to its EMA. And then we look to play a breakup. But damn, I thought you wanted a breakout. Well, in this particular case, it might be worth a shot, okay? If you have a chance of a double or a quadruple on a trade with fairly tight stop. Now, I say fairly stock, tight. These, these stocks are very volatile, but at least you know what your risks are. They're fairly well-defined. If it comes back in, then you have to get out, obviously. It comes back to, let's say, the 30-day EMA. So... If the breakout is qualified in a couple of ways, just like with the IPO pattern, the Landry Light IPO breakout thing, that when a market breaks away from its moving average, it, yes, it's a breakout, but it also has a little momentum behind that breakout. So in this particular case, and I've only seen one of these so far, I haven't done a whole lot of research. I've seen quite a few of them work. Let me just rewind it. I've only seen one in real time, and it was actually a day later. So it was, I was a day late and a dollar short on this one. But what would happen if you had the upside Landry light, a wide range bar, and a close 
above the open. So that means the stock did really well intraday. It also made a wide range bar and it has Landry light. And then I added to it, the stock must also do something dumb like provide holograms or unmanned aerial vehicles for the agricultural industry. And you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> That's what UAVS does, okay? Whatever the hell that is. And there was a stock the other day, I've already forgotten the name of it. I got a tiny piece of it, not much. And I made a little money, not a lot to brag about, not enough to brag about, but it's some company took off the other day because they make holograms for something. And I have no idea what they do. Hit <laughs> somebody texted me, what the hell is this? And I'm like, are you confusing the issue with facts? I thought you were a much better trader than that. Anyway, the more preposterous, the better. So here's the little Landry light thing on there. Notice that this stock blasted higher. Just incredible rally. It came right back in, okay? You wait for the downside Landry light, or at least for it to intersect that 30 EMA. And then you need upside Landry light plus, and there's your Landry light, low is greater than the EMA, plus you need a wide range bar where the close is greater than the open. And that would be a buy signal and you would buy on the close, take a little bit of a leap of faith. Now, if you look at this chart, you look at back here and say, well, Dave, that's a wide range bar, close above the open, and there's a wide range bar, close above the open. Well, you did not have the downside Landry light first. So you didn't have, technically, you didn't have that correction down to 30 EMA. Now, I'm not saying trade this mechanically. Maybe you can, maybe you could look to get in on some of those wide range bars and maybe use a very liberal stop or maybe just take a small position or something. This is, this is a topic I call fodder for research. This is something I haven't fleshed out yet. And I, Whenever I come up with something, this somebody else came up with this, but whenever I come up with something, I'm like, I'm not going to share this with anyone. I'm not going to tell anyone. And as I start fleshing it out, before you know it, it just comes out. <laughs> and, you know, that's never hurt my performance on any of this stuff because most of, most people aren't going to follow it anyway. They're going to front run the signals or they can ignore the signals. They're going to pick and choose the signals. And so far, it hasn't hurt the performance. People often say, well, how many people can you have in your service? It's like, well, so far as many as possible because people aren't taking all the setups, people are front running the setups and they're not following along. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. Okay. We have a few members, a few gold members who have not joined the Facebook group. So I would love to have you in. I would encourage you to be there. I think that's one of the biggest benefits of being a member a gold member, that is, of DaveLander.com. If you're in the trading service, you're also entitled to be part of the Facebook group. And you, and you also, at this particular point in time, it won't be forever, but at, at this particular point in time, for the foreseeable future, you will get, anyone who's already on the service will get gold forever. Anyone new to the service, you have to check with me. But for now, you'll get gold. And you'll get to interact with other traders. You could ask me for help. And then occasionally we'll throw out some trades in there and I'll throw out some trades and what I'm seeing in the markets, et cetera. So I think it's a worthwhile venture. All right, I'm gonna shift gears. You guys wanna start asking about individual issues. If you do wanna become a member of .com, you go to this big old long URL, just go to the members link on the homepage. All right, let's get to the long, char uh, long charts. Let's get to the live charts. If you guys want to start asking about individual questions, I've got a couple of write-ins we're going to go over. And then, uh, or I should say before that, so before that, let's talk about the overall market while you guys are getting your questions lined up. Okay, S&P 500, right at these 20-day highs, which are also like 30-day highs or so, as of yesterday at least. Today, obviously, giving it up a little bit. Bit of a bummer. I like to see them break out and not look back, but not the end of the world, nor can you see it from here. But yeah, I sure would like to see some upside follow through. Let's see if I can put the bow ties in. Here's your bow ties moving. Here are your bow tie moving averages. Use your favorite trend indicator, okay? This is one of my favorites, along with daylight, or Landry light, I should call it. I think it used to say Landry light. But you can see. 
downtrend proper order what happened okay and then uptrend proper order for most of this uptrend so far so good now as i said earlier everything works better with trend you had some choppy periods in here okay where it just kind of went back and forth but the bottom line is you probably did want to be out of the market when you had downtrend proper order and then get back in until you had uptrend proper order so nothing's magical but everything works better with trend if we get into a rip roaring uptrend and stay at a rip roaring uptrend then darvis boxes would print money okay bowtie proper moving average order would print money landry light would print money okay anything trend related would print money so right towards the top of the range, I sure would like to see us bust out and not look back. And the good news is we're not that far away from all-time highs. Dave, how far? Well, let's see. As of yesterday, we were less than 5% away. As of today, 12 o'clock, 12, 13 Central Time, we're about 5% away. But that's pretty close, okay? By the way, we could get a... Let's put, take a look at a weekly chart. Let's clean it up a little bit. We could get a TFM 10% system, sell system soon. So Keith hasn't been following along at home lately. So he thinks all of a sudden I'm using all these indicators. So we've always used these things. Uh, it sands the 10% line. But I can't put the 10% line in this chart on the fly. But let's take a look at a weekly S&P. And yeah, if we close any anywhere above this 3042, I need to make a note of that, we will have a buy signal on the TFM 10% system. In fact, we might have had one a couple of weeks back. I need to double check that. Telechart does a rolling week and stock charts, I think, does a calendar week. And I'm not sure if it makes that big of a difference longer term, but it's just something to keep in the back of your head. But yeah, as of, we could tomorrow, we could see a buy signal in the S&P 500 based on that. NASDAQ composite, let's go back to the bow tie charts. As you can see, we've had nice Landry light for a long, long, long time. Let's get a clean chart in here. We pull back recently a little bit. But so far, so good. It's market so far. It looks like it wants to just keep on, keep it on. Let's take a look at gold while we're here. I've been a gold bug on and off my whole life. Probably a gold bug my whole life. <laughs> when I was a kid, I got my dad, 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 let's buy some gold, let's buy some gold. So he started calling up brokers to try to buy gold and got him on his cold call list from like 100 brokers. And they drove the, they drove him crazy. I think he appreciated my interest in the markets, but it drove him kind of nuts. Anyway, so gold coming in a little bit, but just off of these new highs in here. So looking pretty darn good. Let's see how it looks longer term. I think it's all time highs. I think we're pretty close, if not, in gold. Russell 2000 eh, had a pretty good day yesterday, about 3.5%. Today, not so good, down at about a percent. But so far, trying to get out of this box, if you want to call it that, this shorter term box in here, a little consolidation. I sure would like to see it break out the top of his box or make new highs. That would certainly be a good thing. Let's take a look, take a look at gold, the stocks up here at high levels. I'd like to see them break out, obviously, and not look back for a while. I, we are looking to put on a position here today. I'm long NGD. So far, it's eh, hasn't done a whole lot. Nothing to get excited about. Nothing to write home about yet. Drugs busted out the brand new highs yesterday, could pull them back a little bit in here, but as you can see, working their way higher, okay? So, so far, so good there. If you wanna play with the Darvis stuff, make it boxes on top of boxes, so that's a good thing, right? Take a look at biotech. Biotech's all pretty hard in here today, but so far, its last little breakout remains intact, and so far, the big blue arrow points higher. So far, the moving averages, proper order, if I could get it without fat fingering it, Uptrend proper order, looking pretty good. Choose your favorite trend indicator, doesn't have to be mine. And you can see so far so good on there. What's encouraging, at least as of yesterday, was that some of these areas that had bottomed out and taken off and now consolidating or begin to take off or beginning to take off again, such as the transport. So that's certainly a good thing. Silver not too far from 
new highs in here. That's not all time highs based on the commercial on TV. It's sugar goes to all time highs. Well, yeah, okay. And you buy it now, yeah, it'd be great. But a lot of ifs in that sentence, okay. Bonds kind of working their way higher. We got uptrend profit order here. I haven't been paying a whole lot of attention to bonds because they're just been sideways for quite a while. They tried to break down, you know, they're back into a big old consolidation. So nothing to really glean there. All right, let's, we got a plethora of stocks. I better get busy or we're not going to get to them all. Uh, quickly, a write in ASW, oops, ASA, that's going to be a big gold stock. South African, if memory, if memory serves. Yeah, you got a nice little breakout here. Uh, it needs more pullback, but yeah, absolutely. That looks pretty good. Uh, volume slightly thin, but not incredibly thin. You could probably still trade it. There's some other gold stocks out there that look a little bit better, such as the one that I recommended for today. And NGD, I would mortgage your house and put all the money into this one particular stock. Obviously, I'm joking. No, I'm not. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> Dave, I didn't think you were a pump and dump guy. Well, I'm going to start becoming one. <laughs> I'm sick of those guys pumping and dumping, having all the fun without me. No, don't risk more than 2% on a trade. So if you have a trailer, maybe you can mortgage your trailer. All right, that makes no sense. PDD for Carol. Yeah, it looks good. Nice uh, persistent trend in here. Beginning to pull back a little, not bad at all. Uh, ideally, you know, you want to find something a little bit earlier in the momentum cycle. I have this marked up back here. I don't know for a fact, but I'd be willing to bet if you went and looked at the archives, DaveLeonard.com slash archives on what day was that and if i didn't shame on me but if you want to look, look the archives on may 1st or it should be yeah on may it would be on may 4th let's see first yeah uh, the it would be the service for may 4th and hopefully if i did not recommend that stock shame on me on may 4th but i wonder if i did just for s and g's real quick may 4th right here let's see what we had PDD, come on, don't make me look like an idiot. Good Monday is Friday. Patterns. And then, back to me, looking for something to do. I'm not seeing a whole lot out there. Look at that. Look at that. There it is. See that? PDD, right there. You can barely see it. You got to squint your eyes. But there it is. All right. See, I was going to be mad at myself if I didn't have that on there. So, yeah, Carol, go back in time and trade the trade. <laughs> to take a look at the Landry list for about May 1st. And, uh, that would be a good pick. That really would. Obviously, I'm kidding. But, yeah, I, you know, it looks great. A stock is never too high to buy. But if you could find something at a little bit lower levels, then it might be a better, something better to go after. Yeah, PRTS, this one's been in my momentum list forever. It's never really set up a lot. I mean, I can go to look at the archives and see. But this might be a good example of a box stock that never really sets up vis-a-vis -vis my methodology, but it just keeps going higher and higher and higher. Look at that. Consolidate. It's not like Tiny Elvis again. Look, look at this stock. It's huge. It breaks out. It keeps breaking out and consolidating. So, yeah, but it needs a pullback, okay? SDGR, that's another one that I've been looking at. Yeah, this looks really good. I've been watching this one. I like it with today's pullback even more. Notice that it's it's sort of worked its way higher and then it's accelerated higher pullback. Absolutely. Who uh, who mentioned that? Carol? Who mentioned SDGR? Whoever did, you get a high five. First high five of the day goes to Carol. GAN, is it forming a box? GAN, I think I got stopped out. Do I still have GAN? I don't know. I have to check my portfolio. I think I got stopped out. I wonder if I'm still long. I think I'm still long. Hang on. No, I got knocked out again. Gan was one that we were long from a while back. And yeah, here he is forming a box. Absolutely. Um, I guess stocks are always forming a box, right? Kind of a big box, 28 to 22. Let's see the box here. I did, believe it or not, I did play this when it first made brand new highs as an IPO. And then I played it again with the service along with my service peeps when it pulled back. I think it looks okay. It's still in my Landry list. I, I would prefer if it would to pull back into the prior pullback. So it's not one of my favorite new setups now, okay? It's, in fact, I'm not actually going after it, but it's not a bad looking stock. IPO ACCD for Dakota. 
A, C, C, D. Yeah, it's not doing anything yet. The thing is, it made this super high level high on day one. When it makes a high on day one, that's higher than the next highs, okay? If you wanna talk garbage speak, right? When the box forms on day one, top of the box, I like to see the top of the box get taken out, okay? So if this high was down here, then this thing pulled back after this little rally, I'd be all over it. But now I would wait for new highs. NIU, that's gonna be a wild and crazy one. Yeah, NIU looks fantastic. Um, you know, nice accelerated trend higher, a little bit of a pullback in here. A little wild and crazy, but everything right now is a little wild and crazy. They probably make electric cars. Electric cars are going nuts. I guess everybody in the world, everybody in the world thinks, oh, it's gonna be the next Tesla. So yeah, electric cars, everybody's going crazy about electric cars. I made a joke that in shell companies right now, everybody's going absolutely crazy off of these over these shell companies all right which is stupid i used to see the shell companies i just take them off my watch list because it was stupid but nowadays they're going crazy but yeah this looks fantastic nice little deep pullback dangerous 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 setup i think after today in fact what we're seeing right now midday is that a lot of these stocks that had been really trending nicely are pulling back in here so we could see some golden opportunities really really soon nio of course that's an electric car too right I'm going to invest in a shell company that whose electric cars kill the coronavirus. Well, a little bit crazy, obviously, with this HV, but everything's gotten nuts. So HV at this point in time, this was an IPO. Yeah, let's see. It's a Chinese. They make a Chinese company that makes electric cars. Yeah, it's still what I call a toddler or fairly young. Um, it's going to need a little bit more pullback, though. I mean, this is just a crazy run in here. I'd like to see a deeper pullback. Okay. DKNG, DKNG is too many days in the pullback. I was looking at it last night for a client. Okay, if you back the chart out a little bit, yeah, it looks pretty impressive. But for my methodology, that's just way too many days. However, what I told the client last night was on a weekly basis, yes, above 36. If memory serves, I'll check my phone text, but I'm pretty sure it's what I said. Might have said above 35. So, yeah, if you're willing to look at it from a little bit longer term perspective, then, yeah, it looks OK, but it doesn't necessarily it doesn't really fit my methodology. OK, da da for Dakota. Da da da. Who sang that? Who sang that first? That'd be a good. Uh, that would be good trivia. Yeah, you know, this looks pretty good. I'd almost like to see a tiny bit deeper knockout move. But you know what? It did come up here and fake out first. So absolutely, that looks really good, Dakota. Uh, an entry above this high and maybe a stop somewhere, let's say 24. Uh, wild and crazy, you know, everything's wild and crazy right now though. ADCT, ADCT, I think I like. It might be on my list for today. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it looks okay. It's pretty good looking stock. You can see accelerated higher. The only thing I don't like about it, a little bit on the thin side. So you need to kind of check the, volume on that that spreads on that before we go to trade it that's the only thing i think that's holding me back but yeah it looks pretty good good fantastic picks today best best ever i think everybody's getting smarter smarter and smarter and smarter yeah this one needs a pullback it's it's trending nicely you know here <laughs> it's a box stock <laughs> so you know it's made a box on top of box on top of box doesn't really fit the methodology, my methodology perfectly in here. I guess it looked okay on this pullback. I don't know if I had it on my list or not. You can go in and see. Big for uh, Elizabeth. Big. It looks okay. It's kind of like if you had this one huge gap and then it came all the way back in. It looks okay. You certainly, you certainly drawing your big blue arrows in the right direction. I just think you might be able to find something a little bit better, but it certainly looks okay. And then. Is this a one and done type of gap? I think if you wait for an entry though, that might be okay. And it did it did pull back into the prior pullback, as you can see. So it pulled back and then made a pullback into the pullback. But it still looks okay. It's still a lot of momentum there. So I think you can certainly do much worse. Where to get in for NIU? NIU. Uh, boy, I tell you, I would be really careful. Maybe. This is a sound crazy, but 
no earlier than 2150. I know that's a ways away. SI GI will teleport. <laughs> Carol's going to teleport back to the fifth. Ding, you must be DKNG, right? We talked about that. We talked a little bit about how pullback should re ideally look for a potential entry. Well, there's not enough time to get into it today, but we've talked about that. We're almost out of time. We've talked about that quite a bit in the members area. So go in and watch the Q&As, go in and watch uh, all the videos you can stand under methodology. It has to be deep enough, but not too deep. And I know that sounds a little arbitrary. All right, would Etsy be along around 105.5 ETC? I see you using commas for your uh, decimals. You must, you must be from Europe. I, first time I was over there it was like uh, it was like uh, our, our luggage got lost because the plane uh, couldn't get off the run, the plane stalled out on the on the runway. Thank God I was still alive, I guess. <laughs> so our luggage didn't make it, and we're in Switzerland. They're you know, like uh, we were warned ahead of time. Make sure you have a lot of money, and make sure you dress nice. Well, we weren't either. <laughs> anyway, I was I remember looking at a sweater. It was like seventy five or eighty five comma fifty. I'm like, is it eighty five dollars or is it fifty dollars? Come to find out, it was 85.50. Yeah, Etsy looks good. Uh, you know, can you find something a little earlier, like maybe back here, could have found it here or whatever, but it's certainly a good looking stock. Uh, you know, it's kind of going parabolic in here. Not that I wouldn't trade a stock that's going parabolic. I just like some of those wild and crazy stocks we look like looked at earlier, which uh, weren't up as much. You're in Germany. Oh, cool. I was in Germany a few years back. Hopefully I'll get invited back someday when this whole crazy world gets back to business. Okay, we're kind of in lightning round. Uh, no, uh, Prague, no. So you could use this as, keep this on your IPO list, but it looks kind of thin. And so far it's really not taken off. Maybe if it bow ties off its lows, it's you know maybe a Phoenix pattern, but I wouldn't rush out and buy it just yet. But I hear you, it's starting to bottom out and look a little bit better. SMDL, speaking of Phoenix pattern, MDL, uh, Phoenix return to paradise with 30 day daylight. Okay. Maybe this is a weed stock. Uh, I, I wouldn't really say this is a return to paradise just because it's, it's, it kind of shot higher on one day and it's just down here at these low levels. The, uh, the UAVS. It's kind of the epiphany of that pattern. Epiphany, uh, epitome, is that the right word? And even that's just a couple of days taken off. Um, but that's just like one day at a low level. I wouldn't get quite as excited about that. I like the, I like the return of paradise to be at new highs. Okay, I hear you though. It's kind of trying to bottom out longer term. It looks like it wants to bottom out for a long, long time. GSX, I like. Recognize all these stocks, except that it needs a little bit more pullback. And is there something else that we could find a little bit earlier in the trend? But certainly, Mr. Darvis would have traded this one coming out of this base breakout. The problem with something like that or anything when you're doing your analysis is your eye is going to look at the times when it worked great, and you're going to gloss over the times when it didn't work great. Uh, Siggy, no, no, that's just kind of stuck in a. Um, Stuck in a range, so I'm not seeing. And then you got a mound of overhead supply, so forget about that. Where's your trend? All right, well we're way out of time. I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking your time on a busy schedule. I really enjoyed you guys a lot today. Great setups. Boy, I, you got me wanting to work a little harder. Uh, luckily, I, I knew all of them, but uh, you got me nervous that you guys would start finding stuff without me. So fantastic. I think this. I think hands down, best. Best stock picks ever, hands down. That's the, so you guys get the award. And girls, we had a few ladies in here picking some fantastic stocks too. So good, good job. If we don't talk to you now and then, everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much. And we'll hopefully see everyone again next week. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome, David.